Good morning. Hang on. There we go. That's it. Um, yeah, good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this uh, glorious autumn day, uh, Tuesday the 2nd of November 2021. Yes, I hope you're feeling great. Uh, I am today. I, I like a bit of sunshine, and uh, um, yeah, I got I got uh, my secondhand hot tub working today. So I was in, uh, I was sitting in the garden with the sun streaming down, and the also it was chilly outside, and just um, yeah, had a, had a good start to the morning. Actually meditated in the tub. Uh, I suppose it's cheating a bit, but that was good. Uh, yes, so welcome. This is your Yoga Solutions Live, where I try and um, <clears throat> offer some of my 30 years plus experience on um, uh, resolving issues in practice. Uh, 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 it kind of sounds like a, you know, that yoga is all about problems, but, but um, it, it's, it's not. It's about, it's about celebration, it's celebrate, learning how to celebrate the body. And learning how to, um, and the way to do that is to expand your range of choices. And, um, and yoga, yoga practice, physical yoga practice, is a way of exploring those choices. And uh, when you come across a restriction in a particular direction, um, your, body, your body will be telling you where that restriction is. And... and um, and most people's response to that is, well, my body doesn't do that. I better stretch it into shape. <laughs> and uh, that's the very worst thing you can do. Uh, because it, the, the, the reason for the restriction will be not because of the body. The reason for the restriction is because of the way you like to do things. It sort of etches in preferences into your breath and into your movement. And so the diving into uh, okay where is the complication where is the restriction and then understanding that the restriction is a result of the way that you are doing it the the mindset behind what you're doing the 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 sort of in, intention because everyone's trying to solve solve the thing you know um, if you can't do a posture as uh, when you try and stretch to do it you're trying to solve it you're trying to solve the restriction in the body. It doesn't work, is what I'm saying. It doesn't work usefully. As in, you might succeed, but then you end up with a body that's kind of stretched out of whack. Uh, there was a reason there was a restriction in the first place, and that reason was to do with um, how you engage, how, how you approach what you think you are doing. Um, so... Um, Yoga solutions, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a sort of negative thing where we're constantly looking for problems to solve. It's just we want to actually listen to what the body is saying to us, not rather than push through and try and force the body into some sort of um, acquiescence to our decision <laughs> to, to make a particular shape. And um, yeah, so, um, so the, you know, for me, look at rooting around to find what's in the way. It, when, I, when I find something, I'm really quite happy about it because I can identify where the issue is. It means I can work on how I relate to things. And it's, from, from my perspective, it's pretty simple. Um, uh, the main things that are in the way is you are holding the shape by holding your spine. It's number one holding your weight up you know that sort of thing um number two is you're not looking for support you're 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 looking for uh what it's supposed to feel like so um you're not actually finding if you're not looking for support the body will have to hold itself together to protect itself if you look for support from your contact then support can come through your structure which means that the the problems, the, 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 the tissue that's in the way, the effort that feels uncomfortable, um, is there because the body is protecting itself. Okay? So if, but if you look for support from the ground that travels through your bones, then that anything that you're doing should feel good. It, it, should, it should go with the feeling of um, feeling more integrated, more whole, more simple, you know, even though it might be hard for the mind to, to do. So hence, title Yoga Solutions. 
<laughs> okay, so um, yeah. Um, oh, I, uh, I got a phone call from my dad yesterday in Italy, and uh, he said he watches my Yoga Solutions broadcasts, um, and uh, it made me very happy. <laughs> and uh, it made me uh, think I, I did something for him uh, a long time ago. He had um, a, a strong sciatic issue turn up, and I, I did some sort of um, something to help him uh, with. Yeah, I'll show you what that is. And um, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you uh, because if he watches this, then he, he might have a little reminder of in case that ever flares up again. And um, it's a use. It's a useful understanding. It's a. It's a good sort of. Thing to turn to if you are someone that suffers from sciatica, but it's also good for anyone that is jammed up in the hips or feels tight in the lower back or uh, anything like that. So that's what I'll be dealing with today, um, a solution to hip problems, lower back problems, and um, the, the ultimate uh, nightmare, <laughs> sciatica. It's a, it's a horrible thing that happens. It happened to me. And so I'm pretty clear about how to solve the thing. And um, yeah, and the the, the out, oh, the, uh, I forgot to move on to the the point of what I was saying before was the the outcome of going in there and changing your relationships to things is um, well, you end up changing your mind a bit. You know, you change the way you're thinking about things a bit. So it's the person that changes a bit, <laughs> uh, and in that change, the body gets to relax into the new relationship. It makes yoga a very powerful tool for personal development because you get to um, shift your thinking, shift your thinking in, into directions that are more uh, in line with reality. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose that that's uh, what one, of th one of the things that's sort of making me on this tip of the, the, the value of being ready to change your mind is I've been watching, I've been watching with Abigail, uh, Married at First Sight, Australia. And, um, oh my God, yeah, you know, it, when, when you're in relationship, when you're in relationship, it, it is a, it's a, a very stark mirror. You know, you, you might go through honeymoon periods and things, but this person that you're relating to, they get to, they get to see you as you are in warts and all. So those little bits of darkness in your character that you would normally keep to yourself um, get seen and, and you see yourself through the other's eyes. And um, oh my God, on this program, uh, uh, they get married on first sight based on experts um, lining them up and um, and so some of them work out fine, you know, but the thing that makes them work out fine is a willingness to um, actually look when, when there's an issue is a willingness to look objectively at um, oneself at, at, you know, to be able to look at the situation and step outside of the reaction to be able to look at the overview of what's going on and possibly get a little view from another angle. And then when both parties are doing that, then you get communication and you get a development of har harmony in the relationship. Um, and there's others that are fixed in their mental impression. They're fixed in who they are. And uh, their job is to defend that right to be exactly as they are. And uh, they tend to be the ones that expect the other to fall into line. And when they look like they're not doing that, then they get horribly upset and close down and, and um, sort of create more of a problem. And uh, you can see the difference. You can see the difference. And I, I'm talking about people relating to each other. But for me, this is an analogy of how to look at your yoga practice. It's a relationship between you and your body. There's no denying it. When, when you're doing your yoga practice, however you do it, you're in some sort of relationship to your body. And if you're, if you're with the, the ego's intent 
and ignoring the body and you think the body should follow through if if my body loves me it would do this <laughs> you know you can only be disappointed um whereas if you actually want to make a good relationship between you and your body there's a way of listening that is a bit more objective a bit less attached to your own personal agenda and more to do with what does my body um, need for it to come along for the ride with my intent you know i want to be more free i want to be stronger i want to be more fluid I, whatever it is whatever your intent is i want to be stronger even you know whatever your intent is if you want your body to go along with that intent no no amount of bullying it is going to do the job it might it might do temporarily but then you end up with a a body that is kind of surrendered to your intent and it won't speak to you until it breaks <laughs> because it won't be able to do anything else you see so uh, yeah the, uh, it, it reminds me that that that, that uh, program I've been watching is very entertaining in a in a kind of um, a voyeuristic kind of way but um, and, and it's very it's very educational in terms of seeing how people relate um, and where, where they're coming from. But uh, moreover, it, it's another example to me of how life and yoga reflect each other, pra your, your relationship to your practice and life. Kind of the same thing. And, um, and because of that, over the years, I, uh, I've changed. And I've changed through being in this relationship with myself with my body and uh, trying to work out what it wants to, so that it stops complaining about things. Uh, back, to the, uh, back to the thing that we're gonna do today, um, a thing for lower backs, hips, and sciatica. So um, let's see. Um, if you have got sciatica, you, you kind of need to make it comfy. Uh, so what will I do? You need, you need your head, the head side propped up and uh, some of you will need your pelvis raised slightly so i'll get her a thing uh, uh the, the oh uh, block will do um just to illustrate the point uh because you need to be able to relax into a sort of uh, hammocked shape uh, without kind of holding that with your um own efforts it's it's the thing people think uh, they're supposed to do when they lie down is flatten their backs but um, you don't want to have to do that with uh, holding patterns in the groins and so hence the the prop underneath the pelvis just makes it a little bit higher up so that you can rest back from it into the space between the um, upper back and the pelvis uh, if it's too high up it's just uh it doesn't do anything so it needs to be low enough to allow you to sort of slip over it slightly okay and then you get that hollowing out that happens because of the shape of the thing and then the the head end it's not about propping the head up it's more about propping the spine up between the upper back well between the shoulders and the base of the skull so i don't know if you can see what i'm doing I'm, I'm sort of tucking the thing in so that my my neck is supported and my head can relax back over that support with a sort of upward feeling of support underneath the skull so that, that's that's setting up setting it up for um a relaxed version of the thing and if, if you haven't got sciatica, if you're a hardcore sort of yoga practi practitioner and you just want to make it a posture, you, you take these things away. You don't, you don't need the, the support. But I'm doing it like this to make it as comfortable for you as possible. Uh, and say you, your sciatic issue was on the left or your, hip, your left hip was the tight one, um, then it'll be the left leg that you bring towards you. If you have got sciatica, you're gonna to have to do that carefully, all right? So you don't, because uh, the, the thing that's gonna make your sciatic thing um, 
impinge even worse is picking the leg up off the ground like it's a dead weight. So if I, uh, I won't go into too much about how to do that. Um, just find a way of picking it up that doesn't cause a problem. And I would start with it casually sort of sitting on the opposite thigh, the ankle hooked over so that you can rest the standing leg into that hook. It's like the, the I've got my right foot standing, but uh, I don't want to be sort of holding it there whilst I rest a leg on it. I want the standing leg to rely on that hooked foot as much so that it can rest out to the side without tension in the groin. Um, the, the first thing, you know, if, if you've got tight hips, if you've got a tight back, if you've got um, tightness around the sciatic nerve, the first thing is you have to relieve that, uh, let go of any reason for that tightness to be there. So um, holding the legs up with the groins is one of the most prevalent thing. So find a, make sure that you're not doing that uh, and find a way of supporting that. And you could, if you had sciatica, have a load of cushions on this standing leg side so that that leg can just rest out to the side and you don't have to think about it. But for those, those of you that are kind of regular practitioners, you might want to look at that. Do I have to hold that leg in place or can I find a kind of balance between the touch of this folded leg foot um, over that thigh for this leg to relax into? And then the weight over here equals the weight over there. And that's called balance. And so there'll be a, a spaciousness in the groins. So that's the starting point. And that, and that should um, begin to relieve any lower back issues. And if you can let go of the groins, particularly as you um, breathe and release the breath, then things will start to settle. Now, that part where the breath allows you to settle is when you stop grabbing the breath, when you start taking the breath in. It's just something that arrives because you let go. And, the, and um, for you to be able to let go, you need to let go into your support. So the sense of dropping through, uh, dropping into, as, as if the breath is something that falls from above, drops through you and lands as it arrives in the contact between you and the support. And then you can dissolve into that support with the release of the breath. And if that's going on, then there'll, there'll be a, a sense of the, well, a definitive felt sense, somatic experience of space starting to develop within the pelvis, between the thighs, thigh bones and the pelvis, and for the spine, provided it's not overly stretched, you know. Once the tension is released, this is the posture that you can use to um, kind of structurally alter things. And this is what I did for my, my dad. Um, except I, I did it for him. The, the, there is a precision to this, and the precision is that the knee is away from you, but you support the foot towards you, and that foot needs to be precisely in the midline of your body as you support the knee away from you and the foot towards you. And if you can do that um, by leaning and hanging, so you, you can lean, um, if you get the elbow in the right place, you can kind of lean that inner thigh on the hand. And th here's a really important point that could be your kind of rule of thumb. The knee joint needs to be no less than 90 degrees. No more than 90 degrees, no less than 90 degrees. Okay, so 90 degrees. And the reason for that is if you are hanging off that foot and propping the thigh, the knee away from you at any other angle, 
it'll be a strain for the joint in some fashion. Um, it, so, and that, that 90 degree rule just keeps it safe for the joint. And if you feel any tension, if you feel any problem in the knee, uh, you can do something about it by activating the foot, but just play with the angle until you get a place where it feels safe to hang your shoulders weight from that foot. Okay. And that's about it. I mean, um, I've noticed that my other leg has started to hold itself up. So I'm getting tension on the inside of the pelvis. So you need to find a way of letting that go. And one way is to just um, use the edge of the foot and active, actively wake up that foot so, you, so that the weight of the leg is transmitted to the edge of the, the, the foot, through the edge of the foot to the ground and let that knee sort of fall out to the side, but with a little away from you feeling like you are actively propping yourself up. That, that foot does the job of that block, you see? It makes the base of the spine light. But if you're doing it with your groin, by pulling the groin in and pushing the ground away, um, you'll, you'll aggravate the issue. So there's a lot of precision involved, but it's more precision in terms of whether it feels um, okay. So the foot in the exact midline of the body, 90 degree knee, the thigh supported away from you, away from your body, as you empty away from it on the inside. And um, so, and it's the emptying away from it on the inside. <sighs> that gives you a sense of space between the thigh and the body. The, if you fill that space with the breath, you're back to being tense around the base of the spine. So you also need to, to receive the breath by letting go into the ground beneath you. So um, ideally no effort in the leg, particularly to hold it in place. So the arms will have to do something. So that hand on the foot is helping the knee stay at 90 degrees. And the hand on the thigh wants to help externally rotate the whole of the leg. And that's the, this is the constructive bit. And um, what, what will happen is you, you'll tilt, you know, your pelvis will slide round as you push the knee away. So you, you want to kind of have a sense of symmetry and the foot being midline with your eyes kind of resting vertically up, uh, ver in the, uh, eyes resting towards the foot, gives you a sense of symmetry. And then the two legs mirroring each other. So if it was up here, it would be exactly the same on the opposite side. But it's on the ground instead. And you kind of actively get involved with the touch of the hands and feet. So a little bit of the foot in space is touching the hand as much as the hand is hanging onto the foot. A little bit of supporting, well, quite a lot of supporting that thigh away from you. And then a, a symmetry, a symmetry that you can kind of tune into through the breath. And the thing that's going to allow, it might be intense for you already, it is for me, it, it, the, it, there'll be a strong sensation around the outside here of tissue changing. But what you're looking for is space on the inside, not, not breath, space on the inside. The breath wants to arrive feel like it arrives um, in the space behind you. So if you imagine that the breath arrives behind your lower back, if you imagine, then, then you'll do something to make that happen and that'll be a core cool response. And then when you release the breath, you rely on your touch so you can empty into the center of things. If you imagine that the breath is something that arrives on the outside of this, of these legs, both of them, that will give you, that will make you act in a way that goes with that, and it's both legs, so you'll be sort of meeting the space beyond the legs as you breathe. 
and then you release within, away from that. The core will empty more and more firmly as you support this structure arrangement. But what you're doing is you're actually creating space between the pelvis and the sacrum itself. So there needs to be a kind of definitive let go around the base of the spine as you do this. And a, a nice way of feeling the symmetry of it is you, you have your midline, you have the two knees out to the side. If you can imagine breathing, wait, wait, if you can imagine that the leg, pelvis and lower back, all part of this sort of bowl-like structure that um, rests into space to breathe, that expands into space to breathe beyond you. And you'll find an activity with your touch that supports that. Then when you release the breath inside of it, you leave, you keep supporting the structure away from you on both sides. And the intensity of that is you changing the shape of the pelvis around the sacrum. So you're sort of giving yourself, you're developing an inner spaciousness within the pelvic bowl and between thigh and pelvis, so the hips. And you can see my legs shaking because something's changing. That happens quite regularly. It's quite a natural thing to happen. But I can, uh, the symmetry of it, foot midline, a sort of mandala shape with the limbs, together with a, um, a, a wholeness of pattern, a wholeness of shape, the spine behind me, as well as the legs beyond me, is where I meet to receive the breath. And then the emptying breath within that structure, within that bowl, gives me the space to create even more space. Okay. So, if you followed that, um, just... I mean, I've only got half an hour, so uh, I probably won't do, have time to do the other side. But uh, if you lay out your legs, you, know, you might need to wobble it around a bit just to ease out the sensory um, uh, intensity. And then when you lay out the other one, just compare, feel the difference. And, and no notice the space that you've created between you and your leg on this side. And that spaciousness gives you a kind of throughness, a, a feeling of connection to higher up in the body. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that understand that the legs kind of dangle from the diaphragm. And you might even be able to feel that. Um, the, uh, for me, the other side feels like a lump of me meat at the moment. It feels um, sort of dull in comparison and kind of clogged up. And on the side that I worked, it's zingy, it's um, connected, there's a sense of flow through it, and, and that foot is um, so much part of me compared to the other side. Okay, so if, if you um, hope, hope that was useful, do, do the other side, otherwise you'll be walking around in circles all day. Uh, I'll do the other side when I've um, signed off. Um, yeah, so I hope that was interesting and uh, I hope you enjoyed that, Dad, if you're watching. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's, that's about it from me. I, I've got a workshop coming up on Saturday as usual. I'm, I'm having a pause from my Sacred Breath course um, for a few weeks. Whilst I work out when, uh, when to start that off again. Um, and yeah, so uh, come and join me next Saturday for one of my regular Saturday morning celebration of the body workshops, celebration of body and breath always. And uh, for those you can turn up and um, I, I, I tend to construct the thing uh, based on the needs of the participants. And um, so if you turn up, you get a chance to work with me directly and get answers to whatever's going on for you, okay? Um, yeah, that's it. 
Much love to you all. I will see you same place, same time next week. Do feel free to share this around Facebook for as long as I leave it up. Um, come and join the website. Uh, free members get discounts on, th on things that I do. Um, silver members get bigger discounts. Uh, gold and platinum members can turn up to most of my stuff for free. Um, apart from the, not the courses, but the huge discounts on things. Okay. So, uh, yeah, until same time, same place next week. Much love to you all. Bye now.